hip dysplasia is a kind of a big term that's used in a lot of different ways and it can be confusing but basically hip dysplasia means the ball isn't formed in the socket properly and so the socket can become a little bit worn and shallow or the hip can be completely dislocated so hip dysplasia ranges everywhere from a complete dislocation to a mild wearing away of the hip socket and it's really common in newborn babies because newborn babies have loose hips. Now it's really the same thing. It's just that most people have heard about it in dogs and, and I'm not sure why they haven't heard about it in people because it's actually the most common abnormality in newborn babies. When you examine newborn babies, it's very, very common. And we're not sure why the world's not more aware that it happens in babies, but it does. Most babies will heal spontaneously. Now, it's the same thing in dogs, though, because it happens in big breeds of dogs, and the hips are a little unstable. And if the dogs walk early, then they're more likely to get hip dysplasia if they're a heavy dog. And that little amount of dysplasia over the years wears out their hip joint. So that's what happens. Now, if you could treat dogs early, they also wouldn't have arthritis when they're older. Newborn babies are at risk, first of all, because the mother makes hormones that allow the ligaments to relax, so the hip can get loose. And girl babies are a little more at risk because the hormones affect their hips more. And babies that are in awkward positions, like babies that are in a breech position, um, are more likely to get their hips stretched. Uh, firstborn girls are a little more at risk because the mother's womb is not as forgiving on the firstborn child. So those are the, the biggest risk factors are really breech babies uh, and a positive family history. But firstborn children are a little bit more at risk than, than other children. And the kids with uh, hip dysplasia are, are really normal. They're normal kids. This is not a birth defect like uh, some other types of birth defects. There's nothing missing. It's just that the ligaments are loose and the hip can become unstable. So if you can treat it early, then the ligaments can tighten up and the hip goes back in the socket and everything's okay. Now there's some, there's some more severe forms that don't respond to that, but by and large, if you can find it reasonably early, it'll, it'll all go back together the way it's supposed to be. You think about a baby, they're in the womb all cramped up and the hips and knees are all bent up and so they're all in this uh, baby position. And when they come out at first, they, they're still tight. Their hip muscles are tight and their ligaments are, their, their muscles are tight. Mm -hmm. So if you take their legs and stretch them out straight, it puts a lot of stress on their hip joint. So I think the important thing is to allow their legs to be in that fetal position for a little bit longer so the hip joints can develop and become stable. A hip plick is something that the pediatricians look for because if the hip's a little bit unstable, it might kind of pop out and pop in the joint, like cracking a knuckle. Most of the time, hip clicks really aren't anything except kind of an alarming uh, nuisance. Little babies will click, just like if you bend your knuckles or bend your knee, sometimes it'll pop and click. So the majority of hip clicks really don't amount to anything, but they are a warning sign that warrant uh, an appointment so, that the, so they can be checked out. The pediatricians are the first line of defense for, for, you know, for finding hip dysplasia and for finding these little things that babies can have wrong with them, and they do a great job. But the, the pediatrician will usually find a hip click and then maybe order an ultrasound or another study. So if the pediatrician has any suspicion, they'll either get some extra tests or refer them to the pediatric orthopedic surgeon. The treatment depends on how severe it is. So a complete hip dislocation would be treated differently than a mild instability. The most of the mild instabilities and most of the hip dysplasia in children does get better by itself. And so that, that's the good news. Uh, so the job of the doctor is to figure out which ones are bad and need treatment. The ones that are treated early, uh, even the completely dislocated ones, we have little harnesses and braces that we can sometimes put the put hips back in the joint. 
the good news is that most mild forms of hip dysplasia do get better because it's just a matter of, of the hip joint maturing. And if there's nothing harmful done to the hip, then it'll grow around the ball and everything will be fine. So most mild dysplasia, probably 80% of hip dysplasia doesn't require treatment. It's the more severe ones that we're looking for. The harness doesn't work about 15% of the time, so there again, that's a really good question. When that doesn't work, then often we can put the child under general anesthesia and, and just put the hip back in the socket under anesthesia like you would a dislocated hip from another cause. You just kind of pop it back in the hip joint and then you put them in a body cast until it becomes stable. And that can, they could be in a body cast for three months. Sometimes all of your treatments with casting or bracing or harnesses and those things just don't work. Or sometimes kids have a really severe form of hip dysplasia. And in those cases, you actually have to put the hip back in the socket surgically. And the way we do that is obviously we make an incision and then we go down to the hip joint and release the stuff that's keeping the hip out of the socket. So we just physically clean out the socket put the ball back in the socket, and then sew everything back together. Now sometimes there's some bones that have gotten misshapen, so occasionally there's a reorientation of the bones to help keep the ball in the socket after you've repaired it. Kids that have surgery are amazing. That's one of the reasons I enjoy being a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, because they bounce back so fast. They're usually in the hospital about two days. They're in a body cast, though, for six weeks, which is very hard on the parents but not so hard on the kids. After the cast comes off, they'll wear a brace or some kind of positioning thing for maybe another six weeks at night. And then after three months, you pretty much turn them loose. And they're usually cured. Sometimes the surgery doesn't work or it has to be repeated. And uh, that's one of the things we're trying to do at the Hip Dysplasia Institute is to try to figure out which surgeries have the best outcomes and how to do them and whether there's some technical variations. But even when the surgery doesn't work, say, the first time, there are options to redo it or revisit it. And so it doesn't mean that it's the end of the hip. We just have to keep, uh, keep trying. If you don't treat it early, then the, the treatment that's needed is a little more serious when it's discovered. So up to a certain age, you can, you, know, you can treat them with harnesses or casts or surgery and still really get a good outcome. And, and up to about age four years, you can usually get a really good outcome that'll last the child a lifetime. But if the child's older or it's discovered after that, then they may develop arthritis just like the dogs will develop arthritis at a later age. We definitely see cases that are diagnosed late, sometimes after the child's walking when they have a limp. And even in countries like Norway where they have comprehensive screening and ultrasound and do everything possible, we found that of all hip dislocation cases, about 7% of them show up late. So even the best screening is either gonna miss some or they're gonna develop late. And now we feel pretty sure that some of these actually occurred late. I've seen one child myself, the x-ray was absolutely normal at 14 months of age, and the child came back at two and a half years of age with a completely dislocated hip. It, it's hard to imagine how that could happen. I wish we could stamp it out across the world and just get rid of hip dysplasia. It's definitely more common in some cultures than others, and the cultures that carry their babies with their legs apart like they wear them on their side with the legs spread. Those cultures don't have as much hip dysplasia as cultures that wrap their kids up tight with their legs together. So there may be some possible ways to reduce the burden of hip dysplasia around the world.